Hey guys, how are you all? I hope you are doing well. I was on the internet and I came across this picture and I found some mistake in this building. So I want you to pause the video and look into this building carefully and find what the problem is. So if you think that this building has got brick wall up to this position over here from here to here and after that suddenly it has got the beams and the columns but here you can see that there are beams and there is also a little bit of column that is seen over here. So is this your answer? Then yes, you are wrong. So this is not how you think okay. <laughs> you have to think out of the box. Alright, so the engineer who built this house, the client whose house this is so he's not that stupid that he will build a brick wall here and all of a sudden he will go for the beams and he will go for the columns all of a sudden okay so it will just increase the cost of his construction and he will not get any strength from these concrete structures so instead what he will do he will just build the brick walls all the way to the top all right, so the client and the engineer, they are not that stupid that they will do this kind of mistake. Only reason that you don't see the frames over here is because this is a photoshopped image. And you need to understand this, that this is a photoshopped image and this thing cannot happen. No engineer in this entire world will make this kind of structure. No client in this world will pay for this kind of structure okay? so you do not think like oh there are columns missing and there are there are beams missing so you do not think like that okay the problem over here is in this portion of the building this portion that you see this is the problem area of this building and we normally ignore this problem and i see a lot of buildings that have got this problem and uh, uh, maybe the engineer doesn't have the idea but uh, this thing you need to understand and you need to implement in your other projects as well. So over here you can see that we got a normal span of beam from here up to here. So this span is pretty much uh, normal, no problem at all. But here you can see that the beam is very short. This is still not a problem. The problem is this column that you see over here this column is the problem and this column this is not the column only here so this column goes all the way like this okay so the photoshop export has also removed the column from here as well so this is the problem so so when there is no column over here and this is just a cantilever beam in that case it's just fine no problem at all but when this column comes over here now the span of the beam turns out to be from here up to here when there is a cantilever the movement is zero at this position and it is maximum at this position when there is column the span is less the movement is maximum at this position also at this position also we know that the stiffness of the beam k is equal to there is some uh, constant over here uh, it depends on the support conditions okay so what is the support conditions and there is EI elasticity and movement of inertia divided by length to the power 3. So stiffness is you can say that inversely proportional to the span of the beam which means that higher the span lower is the stiffness. Lower the span higher is the stiffness. So you can see that the span is very low here. This makes the stiffness is very high here this is still not a problem okay having high stiffness okay nobody cares but what happens is that when there is an earthquake there is a lateral load and this building also goes lateral motion with the earthquake during that condition as the stiffness of this beam is high as compared to this beam this beam will attract more force as compared to this beam and due to this reason the failure of this beam is pretty much high and that is due to the presence of this column over here. What we can do to minimize this kind of failures that might happen? The first thing is you can avoid the column but when the span of this column goes let's say beyond 1.5 meters or 5 feet 
then you might not be allowed to make this beam as a cantilever beam you definitely need to provide the columns here okay and this column should go all the way to the footing all right so it's not a floating column it should go all the way to the footing like this just like the other columns so now what you can do here is that as a structural engineer what you have to do so i'll just draw it like this this is my uh, normal normal column and this is my short beam okay all right so this is my short beam and this is my another column here okay and i got a beam over here as well like this the normal beam okay so this is my normal beam okay and this is my short beam so what you have to do now is that the reinforcement that comes from this beam like this it goes all the way into this column this beam right and it will go here also the reinforcement at the bottom it will go like this okay so this should be uh, here the the beam should be here all right so this reinforcement is sufficient for this beam but this reinforcement though it looks as if it is sufficient in your structural designing software but it is not sufficient from the earthquake point of view when there is earthquake then it might not be sufficient so what you have to do is that you have to provide you have to provide extra reinforcement like this that goes that goes down and from here also you have to provide the extra reinforcement like this all right so if i draw the section here if i draw the section here then it will be heavily reinforced it will be heavily reinforced so this is the top reinforcement this is the bottom reinforcement and the extra reinforcement here also you have to provide some extra reinforcement like this so this longitudinal reinforcement will help to distribute or distribute or let's say absorb or distribute the tensile stresses okay so that come tensile stress that comes when there is earthquake there is a heavy earthquake and not only this and not only this you have to provide the lateral reinforcement very closely so that the shear stress the heavy shear stress that comes into this beam during the earthquake is absorbed by these lateral or the transverse reinforcement so guys this was for this video i hope it was helpful thank you for watching and take care